Can nitric oxide deficiency start at birth? Number one, Dr. Nathan Bryan here, International Leader in Molecular Medicine in Nitric Oxide Biochemistry. Over the past 40 years, we've learned a lot about nitric oxide, what leads to nitric oxide production, specifically the, the microbiome. We know there's some genetic predispositions that compromise the ability to make nitric oxide. So yes, nitric oxide deficiency can occur at birth. If you have an MTHFR or an ENOS SNP, that compromises your ability to make nitric oxide at birth. But I think more importantly, perhaps just as importantly, is the microbiome. We know that vaginally delivered babies are inoculated as they come through the birth canal. And it's that inoculation that allows for uh, adequate microbiome. We also know that breastfeeding inoculates and helps to restore the gut and the oral microbiome. So here's what we're finding. Cesarean delivered babies, where they bypass the the microbiome and the inoculation through the birth canal uh, seem to have a little bit higher increased risk of certain diseases later in life. But the most prominent, most indisputable data are breastfed babies. Breastfed babies are protected from many diseases where formula-fed babies have an increased incidence of metabolic disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease, high blood pressure later in life. And we published several years ago, probably 15 years ago, that breastfeeding confers nitric oxide production because the early colostrum, the transition milk, is what contains inorganic nitrite that then before the baby's inoculated, before there's a microbiome, before the ability to reduce dietary nitrate to nitrite, the breast milk is delivering inorganic nitrite directly to the baby before they have the, the, the microbiome. And then as that bacteria colonizes in the gut, in the oral cavity, through breast milk and through breast suckling and through kissing and touching, and normal inoculation. Then the baby's able to produce nitric oxide on its own through the delivery of nitrate, through the mature milk, and even through the foods they eat. So vaginally delivered babies, breastfeeding is extremely important. And I think it confers protection later in life that we can partly explain by nitric oxide. And understand cesarean deliveries are extremely important, especially in high-risk pregnancies. But I think if you have a cesarean delivered baby, then take care to inoculate. Kiss the baby, certainly breastfeed, to make sure that they get that inoculation and perhaps take some vaginal fluid and, and you know, rub it in some physicians, some OBGYNs do this in cesarean delivery. So they're getting inoculated. Even though they're not going through the birth canal, you can take that, that fluid and inoculate the baby, put it on their body, and mimic that, that journey through that birth canal. So nitric oxide deficiency can occur at birth, but here's what we know. Breastfeeding is extremely important. The benefits of breastfeeding are indisputable. Uh, six months to one year optimally, uh, but at least six months. Try to get six months of breastfeeding because that confers some nitric oxide uh, protection. And then avoid formulas, you know, especially formulas with high iron that disrupts nitric oxide production. So get informed, get educated, but the best case scenario, have a vaginally delivered baby, breastfeed for at least six months to a year, optimize that baby's nitric oxide production for its entire life.